Hey there, and welcome back to Tactical Breach Wizards. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of this completionist walkthrough on hard difficulty with health cut in half. Last time we left off, after teaming up with some unexpected allies, we partnered with none other than Liv Kennedy's team to make sure the recording exposing Chapel's religious dictatorship actually gets aired. And we succeeded, but of course Liv had a surprise for us in store. We don't know exactly why, but in this very room right here, she killed Ryan, her druid hitman, whose body you can still see on the floor. Also in the room, a siege cleric, a powerful robot with 5 points of armor that cannot be defenestrated or pushed through a death's door, and to complete Jen's confidence goal, we need to take it out by the end of turn 2. In fact, we are aiming to do so on turn 1 right here in order to unlock another very elusive achievement. First of all though, we start things off with a bit of a door sealing spree from Jen. Before targeting the tracker here though, we want to move in with Zan. By now, I think you can already see where this is going. Let's set up a predictive bolt and then push the tracker into it. Alright, that's a mana gained for Zan as well as a bonus move for Jen. We can use the latter to grab the intel here and then gale grenade Jen in front of the second reinforcement door. Seal that too and thanks to the grenade we now have another move to make, however first we will time boost her and then Zan can set up a predictive bolt to catch the second tracker on the map. Then it's back to Jen who can now use chain bolt to target riot priest, siege cleric and tracker in that order. The Siege Cleric of course entirely unharmed by this, but against the other two it worked out perfectly. Zan has gained another point of mana and so we can now finally seal the third door with Jen. We are not done yet though, very important here, we want to Gale Grenade her again to move one tile over to the right and then we want to line up Dell at the other end of the room directly opposite to Jen. We do all of this because covered by 5 points of armor there really is not a whole lot we can do to directly damage the Siege Cleric. So instead, we'll just transfer Jen's damage onto them, and that damage is going to be significant. So, there we go, 5 points of damage dealt, and the Siege Cleric is still standing. However, once again, we are not done yet. After dashing back, Dal is now going to protect Jen with a Riot Block. This adds an extra tile of movement between Jen and the Riot Priest, and results in the latter not being able to attack her on this turn. Up next then, we want to move Bangs right next to the intel here, but as you can see, this is tricky. Sometimes the game gives you a path that does not lead straight to the mine, other times it doesn't, but eventually, with enough rewinding, she gets there. Now, especially after grabbing the intel, I think it becomes a bit clearer what the game actually wants us to do here. After all, the body of Druid Hitman Ryan is still down on the floor here, and Dessa can resurrect people. However, to unlock the achievement we're going for, it is actually very important that we do not do this. Instead, we simply want to time boost her to throw two sedative cocktails at the Siege Cleric. Thanks to the ability's damage boost we picked up recently, this will be enough for the Siege Cleric to go down at the end of the turn. A turn that we are now going to finish with another predictive bolt from Zan, but that likely won't do much. And there we go, a Siege Cleric defeated and we have unlocked the The Needlessly Hard Way achievement. The achievement's description then also giving away clearly what should have happened. F*** it, I'm rezzing their guy. The Druid, he's not on our side. You think he's still on lives? And with that, the game also once again very clearly tells us what to do here. In fact, resurrecting Ryan has now become an official objective. Christ on the bike, how did that not kill me? It did. New job. Big Mac. Kill it? F*** it, I'm game. I can't believe that worked. I'm a people person. And there we go, our squad has now grown to 5, at least for the moment. Ryan is now under our control, and to be able to complete Jen's confidence goal and finish this mission by the end of this turn, that's actually crucial, as there is quite a lot still left to do. We'll get to know Ryan's full skill set soon, for now we learn that he can apply the Brittle effect to enemies, which causes them to take increased damage and for their armor to count as if it was only health, meaning they can also lose it. You can see how this would have come in handy against the Siege Cleric, but it also helps against the Riot Priest, who we can now hit with Brittling Dart, costing no action at only one point of mana. This now applies one point of Brittle, increasing incoming damage by this much. And we will shortly see what that looks like in action. 
as Dell now moves in for another charge. And there we go, only 3 points of damage, but the Riot Priest has lost all armor, and we can add to that with another predictive bolt from Zan here, that deals more damage than a follow-up charge from Dal would have. Moving on then, we run Jen to the windows and deal the final blow with a static blast, and we'll make use of her bonus movement in just a second. For now, let's dispatch off the tracker here with a death door and a sedative cocktail, that way we now only have the two doors to close. And Banks is thankfully in range to take care of the first, while Jen can broom breach and then use her bonus movement to seal the second. And just like that, the level is complete in just two turns, and we are also one achievement closer to full completion. God damn it, there's two of them in there. Hi Ryan, nice to meet you. Can you help us take down two more siege clerics? What does it pay? I just brought you back from the dead. If you did work without a contract, that's your problem. Sort it out later. We have to get in there and stop them before they destroy the service. How many do we need online for the broadcast to finish? One might be enough, but I don't want to cut it that close. Protect as many as you can. While taking out two walking tanks while our anti-armor guy is kicking up a pay dispute. Good summary, let's go. Right, so welcome to level 2 and if you thought that one siege cleric was difficult, how about two with more coming in through the reinforcement door here? All of them hell-bent on destroying as many of these small server devices as possible. We also want to take note of confidence goals for Dessa and Ryan, both of them however fit right into our strategy for this one, so let's get to it. First of all, since she has already breached, we want to move Dell over into the corner here, and then it's time to redeploy Zan to the door we just opened. This now allows him to move over to this particular spot right here without having to breach the door on the other side, and it is important that we hold off on that until Zan has laid down the predictive bolt. Then we can redeploy Dessa and breach. Right, one enemy down and one point of mana goes to Zan, who will now lay down a second predictive bolt, targeting the tile just to the right of the siege cleric. Afterwards, we move in with Jen, grab the intel and then launch a chain bolt, targeting the weapons chest in the corner here, the cleanser by the window and the tracker right in front of Zan. So that's two more enemies taken out and Zan has gained another point of mana, which means now it's finally Ryan's turn. Now to get the most out of Ryan it is important to constantly supply him with mana, which he can in fact steal from teammates once per turn. Good thing that Zan has plenty to spare, which now allows Ryan to apply two brittling darts to the siege cleric here. Once again this ability does not cost an action and can be used as long as he has mana. So, two points of brittle have now been applied, let us lay down another predictive bolt on top of it all, and let's also take note of the fact that we have a mine to the right of that. What comes next is then very similar to how we solved things in the previous mission. Dessa moves into position, casts transference on the siege cleric and then gets charged by Dal. And there we go, the combination of charge damage, the predictive bolt and the mine all fueled by brittle on top of it all is enough to defeat the siege cleric, albeit also at the cost of losing one of the 11 servers on the map. To ensure that we do not lose any more, let us now make use of Ryan's Impaling Vine, an ability that deals one point of damage and drags an enemy three tiles towards him. In this case, however, the Siege Cleric also has two points of stability, so he's only dragged one tile. Still, that is enough for them to miss the two servers. And this is where Ryan literally goes wild. We have just used his once permission rabbit bite ability, which deals only one point of damage and that was blocked by armor, but also causes the enemy to become confused, meaning they will now see everyone, friend or foe, as hostile. And yes, this even works on mechs, even though on this level it is not that useful, as the mechs here are not really programmed to attack us in the first place, they just want to destroy servers. And so we switch shapes with Ryan once more and turn him back out of his dog form. This move was mostly done to get him over to this side of the map and to be able to grab one more point of mana. Let us now finish the turn by moving Dal a bit further into the room as well, 
and then we can enter the 4C phase, which will see the destruction of one more server. The Siege Cleric, meanwhile, only hits empty air. That's the nice thing about them. With their melee attack, they will always only target the three towers in front of them. Now, what's not so nice is that another Siege Cleric has entered the map, and if you take a look at the silhouette behind the reinforcement door, you will see that that's going to be the case on the next turn too. And, well, Dessa can only cast Transference once per mission, so I suppose we'll have to find a new trick to take them out. And, well, that new trick is in fact a rather old one. Once more, it all starts with a predictive bolt from Zan. Then we move Dal into position to grab some intel. We're going to use that for a crucial position swap in just a second. But first, let's get Ryan stocked up on mana. He already has one, can steal another from Zan and then grab a third from behind the mechs here, allowing him to cast his Brittling Dart three times in a row. And now, sufficiently weakened, we are going to use Dal to swap positions with the Siege Cleric, which immediately causes Zan to unleash. Nonetheless, the Siege Cleric is still standing, but they also still have two points of Brittle applied to them. For every attack that hits them, one point is removed. And those two points now mean two extra points of damage as we launch a Spectral Skull with Dessa, leaving Zan to deal the killing blow with a three-bolt burst. This, by the way, now also completes Ryan's confidence goal, as we have already applied plenty of brittle bonus damage. Nonetheless, we are now essentially in the exact same spot that we were in at the end of the last turn. We still have a Siege Cleric standing and another one coming in. So, let us at least make sure that the one we have does not deal damage to any more servers. Ryan's Impaling Vine only deals one mega point of damage, but a time-boosted Dell will get us exactly what we want. And there we go, both servers are now out of the Siege Cleric's attack radius. Let's move Dell into the corner to have a bit more run-up on the next turn. And with Jen, we can actually protect one more server here, using her action to defuse the mine. Yes, that is possible, although usually actions should be spent on attacking enemies. So then, it is turn 3 now and we are back up to two Siege Clerics, who have, coincidentally, picked the exact same spots as the two we had on the last turn. That also means that our approach this time around won't be radically different, so once again we start things off by setting up a predictive bolt. Then it's time for Ryan to get a little closer here, steal some more mana from Zan and apply the first point of Brittle to the mech up front. At this point, we then want to take note of Dessa's confidence goal, which requires her to resurrect a teammate who has no mana left, and Ryan is now the perfect candidate. Why? Well, because doing this transfers the mana from Dessa onto him, allowing him to shoot his brittling dart again. And with that, we are now ready. Let's use Impaling Vine to drag the Siege Cleric into Zan's shot. Alright, there we go. Both abilities did some damage, leaving the Siege Cleric standing with only 4 hit points. We can now switch things over to Dell, who can once again charge the other Siege Cleric out of position, and then use her Sensor Slam to deal 3 further points of damage to the one that's already injured. And that now leaves Zan to once again deal the final blow with a 3-bolt burst. We are then going to finish the turn by once again defusing a mine with Jen and moving her to the next one. Although, with no more reinforcements about to come in and 8 servers still remaining, I think the rest of the way here should not be too tricky. So then, let's take care of the last Siege Cleric here and once again we will employ the same strategy as before. First of all, Ryan will grab some mana and then steal some more from Zan. Afterwards, we apply double brittles to the Siege Cleric and move Zan into position to not only grab some mana but also lay down another predictive bolt. Then we switch over to Dal, who can take a bit of a run up here and then charges the Siege Cleric head first. Three hit points remain, soon to be two after another charge, and at this point there would be multiple ways to finish this. I'd like to do it by time boosting Dal and having her use the Sensor Slam once more. And there we go, mission complete. Seven servers still remain intact, but let's go full completionist here. With Jen here, we defuse the mine to make sure that we don't lose one more, and that completes the level, and with that, the mission.
So here we are then back in the perk screen and indeed it looks like Ryan has joined us. And not only that, we've also earned a perk to spend with him. First things first though, let's reward Zan here. And I think now is the perfect time to finally grab Time Bomb. With our squad now this large, giving time boost and expanded radius makes some sense, as our chances of hitting at least two people with it are now maximized. Once again though, as always, we might end up shuffling all of these around as early as the next episode. Now Del up next is an interesting case, there are a few things with her here that I find tempting. A flat plus 2 damage increase to Sensor Slam is one of them. However, I feel like Charge is still the main ability we're using with her. So it was between Rampage 2, essentially making her an unstoppable wrecking ball as long as she can hit enemies, or, and this is perhaps a bit more reliably achievable, Momentum, an extra 3 tiles of knockback if we have at least 3 tiles of run-up, which can also easily translate into 3 extra points of damage. And all of that now brings us to Ryan. His list of abilities and upgrades for them looks rather manageable at the moment. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read through all of the descriptions here. To me, his ability to cause the brittle effect is probably the most useful thing about him, so we're upgrading his Impaling Vine. However, we are doing so with Frost Fingers, which allows the Impaling Vine to also apply brittle. This should reliably allow him to apply one extra point per round. Once again though, none of these choices here are permanent, and we will make some changes according to what any given situation requires. On to outfits then, we have collected a few more confidence points, enough at least to finally enter Dessa's cult phase. Possibly my personal favorite outfit of hers, and Dal can also change, laying off any and all Steve resemblances and becoming gilded. As you can see then, Ryan only has four outfits to choose from, the first of which we will unlock as soon as we complete his next confidence goal. For now though, let's move on and have a quick post-mission conversation. After all, Ryan has not really officially been made a part of the squad. Um, welcome to the team? I'm not on your team. Okay, you're welcome for the res by the way. He's not welcome. And I'm not thanking, you needed me, you used me, it worked. Okay, but there's a little side effect in that you get to go on living now instead of rotting in a chapel crypt. That doesn't count for something? It's useful, but not a favor. Right, so you're a dog sometimes? Yeah. What's that like? It's decent. Okay, hey, why did Liv murder you? Self-defense. I was about to kill her. Okay, well, same question, but switch the people around. How much of her plan have you clocked? Reactor found a way to militarize a mana and she's been burning everyone else's stockpiles of it. We don't know why she's not stealing it instead, but we know her next move is in Medeal. Her next move is Medeal. That's why she's not been boosting mana. She don't have to. She's gonna steal the country it all comes from. Oh, shit. Can you clarify steal in the context of country? Coup d'etat. Her team take the mines and the central reserve, reactor meatheads lock down Villa Medeal and the airport. That much mana plus their new tech, in a couple months they'll have an army of Liv Kennedys. Then we've got a new global superpower and no one else has a mana stockpile left to fight back with. And you were good with this till tonight? Till tonight she told me we were gonna raid the central reserve, not take the nation. I'm Medeelin. Getting that shit out of my country would be a blessing but the Kalen play made no sense. When I pushed, she actually tried to pitch me on it. Bunch of money men wearing my country like a skin. Deep sixing her would have been an underreaction. You make decisions fast, huh? Not fast enough. I was thinking maybe too fast. So then why did Liv help the resistance tonight? Once they have me deal, all they need is time. The other nations will be too slow to realize that mana is the ball game. By the time it comes to war, Reactor will hold all the cards. The one thing they weren't ready for was Kaelin invading the same week. We planned a dozen ops to scuttle Chapel military assets, throw spanners in their war machine, and then you guys find that recording. Godsend. Saved us weeks. God damn it. Find me later. I want to hear more about those ops. So they can give Liv's powers to anyone? Maybe not the full Monty, not yet. 
but they're getting there, and what they can do already is scary sh Does that mean everyone contains within them the potential to be anything with the right stimulus? It's a meaty transhumanist debate, in it. In the sense, we'll all be giblets if the answer is yes. Well, then help us stop her. Oh, I'm stopping her. You can come if you like, but I work alone. You were just on a team. And I got lied to, murdered, and stiffed on my last paycheck. Hence the new policy. Okay, that does track. But we won't promise you any money, and we also won't murder you. I might. Well, banks might. Why are you still trying to recruit someone you can't afford who's already gonna do what you want? Huh, any chance it's because I'm a natural leader? This guy also killed you one time. Oh my god, I'm a mess. And there we are, folks, with Ryan officially recruited, I guess? In any case, we are now more than halfway through Act 3, and the next mission in particular will be a rather interesting one. So stay tuned for that, for today I think we have reached a good point to make the cut. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.